All right, what's going on, everybody? My name is Mr. Hurricane, and welcome to today's live stream. We have the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, and we are getting into practice mode today. As we are preparing for a new season in the series, I have gone through to add to our playbook, and we're going to be seeing a lot of the new stuff I've All added right, to the offense today. All right, what's going on, today. everybody? My name wow, is Mr. Hurricane, and welcome. Fantastic professional YouTuber here. Okay, fixed it. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think the lates are a little bit justified today. I mean, 401, I've been streaming for 30 seconds. Maybe I made it in time. So YouTube does me no favors, because they stopped the countdown with 60 seconds actually left. They no longer do a countdown for that. So, if a minute... I need to be, like, a minute early to be on time. Which, I'm not usually a minute early. So how's everyone doing today? We're going to do a lot more of the gameplay today, probably an hour and a half or so, and we're going to see what exactly this team is all about today. I have gone through to make some adjustments. I'm also working on a couple new slider changes for this year. Nothing truly major. I'm just trying to make sure things are just a little bit more solid. want to give you guys the best gameplay on YouTube, but... Um, early on here, looks like the accuracy is a little spotty. I did drop the quarterback accuracy from 10 to 5 just to see what that plays like. I've never played on 5 before. Hopefully everything is good to go here on the uh, YouTube side of things. Just allow me a minute to make sure that everything is set up properly and there's no issue with the stream. We're not dropping frames or anything. It looks pretty solid to me. Do we have a decision on the Vanderbilt game? Well, the way the poll is going, um, it's like 80% play Vanderbilt. So I think we're playing Vanderbilt, which was the original choice. Not many people voted for us to switch it up. So, let's see, just going through some questions and whatnot so far. A couple Fortnite comments. I may do some Fortnite on the second channel. I have been playing it a little bit just because of the phenomenon that it is. Your lips and voice are out of sync. I spent like 10 minutes fixing this before I went live. It better not be messed up. I see some people saying the music's too loud and some people saying the music is too quiet. I have very conflicting reports here. If you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, I recommend fast forwarding five minutes or so. But I wanted to go through the new stuff that I have added. I now have, let's see, this split Y offset formation is entirely new. Then I have this empty wing trio that's new. This four receiver strong formation is brand new. This Y trips halfback weak is also new. Oh wow. David Guerra sends a super chat here that's actually quite relevant. Well, not like super relevant, but I can actually comment on it. David Guerra sends a super chat. Hello Kane, what's your opinion on Culver's? I'm pretty hungry. Uh, to me, Culver's is near the top when it comes to, like, fast food. Um, if, you, if you're looking for just, like, a quick burger or something like that, it's hard to go wrong with Culver's. If you've never been there, um, their whole deal, which, by the way, they're kind of a regional chain, but they're starting to branch out and kind of get to all over the place. But uh, Culver's is known for what they call a butter burger, and that doesn't really talk about what they're doing to the beef at all. It has to do with them buttering uh, the bun. It's not really anything major from what I've read about it, but uh, the food's good. I think they have really good, uh, if you're looking for chicken tenders, they're also good, but if you have a Chick-fil-A near you, probably choose that instead. Uh, but Culver's for burgers, I have to recommend it. And then, not everybody likes cheese curds, but if you're from like Minnesota, Wisconsin, you probably do. But yeah, Culver's gets my stamp, my seal of approval for sure. 
Patrick sends a super chat. Hey Kane, big Kalispell fan from Canada. First time able to catch his stream live. How do you feel about Johnny Manziel throwing at the San Diego State Pro Day? I mean, I'm always going to cheer for the comeback story. Uh, I don't want to see any player like flame out or have a bad career or anything like that. So, you know, I'd love to see Johnny be able to turn it around. And I'm actually surprised there was so much interest. I thought that teams would mostly ignore it unless there was a reason to pay attention. But with that kind of interest at a pro day, I think that's somewhat serious. Or were they there to watch uh, Rashad Penny instead? And people are just saying that 13 scouts or whatever were there to watch Johnny Manziel. All right. Cool Cole sends a super chat saying best. Thank you, Cole. Liquid Jesus. Your lips are only a millisecond off. Music and voice audio is perfect. Thank you. I was messing around with some settings here. I'm still, uh, you know, I don't know how to use this software as well as I probably should for someone who does this on a regular basis. All right, so with this 5 accuracy, some of these throws are just, like, Madden 18 inaccurate. I feel like 10 is a little bit too accurate and 5 is not enough. And, of course, you can only edit them in 5 incre in increments of 5. So that's the best I can do here. Um, if I can change it back to 10, I'll probably stick with 10. I might have to back out, which is not a big deal. That buys me some time to answer some questions and talk to chat. From, uh, is that Quan Edwards? Can you post your sliders, please? I'll show you them right now. How do you get your updated rosters? Um, I would recommend... Um, go into Operation Sports to see what they have for updated rosters because mine are now not up to date. Super chat here from. Come on. Trying to refresh this page a little bit faster. Oh well. I see it here. David Guerra sends a super chat saying Top Culver's menu items Buffalo chicken tenders, butter burger, cheese curds, chocolate malt, and concrete mixer. I have to also say that the buffalo chicken tenders are pretty good. If you like chicken tenders with some heat to them, and they're not going to light you on fire or anything, but they have some spice, and I'm kind of feeling a little hot just thinking about them. But I tend to go with the regular ones. They're pretty good for uh, fast food. All right. So for those of you that wanted sliders, they're by no means perfect. Um, I am working on doing some adjustments right now, so I'll have you know that these are my current sliders. I usually play with receiver catching on 50. I've dropped it down to 45. I also usually play with pass coverage on 50. I raised it to 45. Or I raised it from 45 to 50, just, just like an hour ago. And then for the CPU, um, I lowered their receiver catching as well, and I raised their pass coverage to make those windows a little bit tighter. I don't mind that challenge. So hopefully that helps you out. Skitter, what do you do when you're not recording or streaming? Um, well, I, I do play video games a lot, even when I'm not working on content. Um, I also... I spend some time on NFL Game Pass watching football. I do a lot of reading about like games and sports. Um, honestly, there's not like a whole lot of stuff I can say that fills in the gaps. I spend a lot of time doing uh, games and reading, and just like sports and games are such a huge part of my life, really. But also, I like to. Uh, Sometimes I just want to go out and drive, especially this time of year. I just kind of like going out to drive and uh, just hanging out. The super chats are flying in. Thank you, everybody. We got one from Jamila the Killer here, who does not send a message, but I appreciate you, Jamila. Then from Michael, longtime viewer, love the content, keep up the good work. Also, I'm a Buccaneers fan, so I love seeing Matt with my Bucks. I'll tell you what, I've loved having Matt Pierre as a Buccaneer. I also like the trade your team made today acquiring Jason Pierre-Paul. And they didn't have to give up a ton to do it. Um, 
They gave up a third round pick, swapped fours to get JPP, who, you know, pass rush is one of the most important jobs in the NFL. Pierre Paul is also a really good run defender. He's always been a pretty complete player, and the Bucks needed a player like him. David Guerra sends another super chat as we continue this trend of fast food questions. He asks, Jersey Mike's, Jimmy John's, or Subway? I'm not familiar with Jersey Mike's. I've never had a sandwich from Jimmy John's, and I don't get Subway. If I need a sub and I'm out, I'm going to Potbelly, which that is a chain. I'm not sure how widespread it is. So let me get into some of this new stuff here with Brandon Warren. As you can tell, this is the kind of these are the kind of plays that fit his style perfectly. So I added a lot of options today. I'd say I added close to 60 or 80 new plays to the playbook today. Didn't completely reconstruct it, but I made enough changes. A super chat from Derek Vance, thoughts on JPP trade to the Bucks? I kind of just messaged, uh, mentioned that one. I do like the move a lot. The Buccaneers need to fix that defense and it starts up front. So now they can give Gerald McCoy a little bit of help there. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're pretty aggressive in getting another pass rusher to add to that uh, combo. Why is Colbert in? That doesn't make any sense. I, I did the quarterback swap for Warren. Does it not work if I do that adjustment? I guess I throw the depth chart then. Not a problem. From Silence. Hey Kane, I love the vids and the hard work. I first found you doing your min during your Minnesota Dynasty. What's going to be your focus for this year's recruiting class? Uh, thank you, Silence. Uh, as it sits right now, my one of my top concerns is to try to find a dynamic receiver of some sort. I know I'm probably not going to find anyone like Ja'Cory Day, but if I can find some sort of a gadget player to have that role again, I'd love to do that. Otherwise, I'm always looking at pass rusher, and I think this year I need to go a bit more aggressive on the offensive line after losing Clay Hutchinson and having uh, four seniors this year as starters. Gage Thomas sends a super chat. Isn't it weird to think that Russell Wilson was the backup to Christian Ponder in your Vikings franchise? There were a lot of interesting backup quarterbacks in that series. And yeah, I had Russell Wilson at one point. I can't remember if I had him play ever. But I signed a lot of names. A lot of, like, knowable names to uh, my backup quarterback roles. And I pretty much changed it every season. Yes, I have Carl Joyce, who definitely is a speed threat, but I was kind of thinking about a gadget player who can play multiple positions, like Day could have. Like, if I wanted to, I could have lined him up at running back, and I should have done that more in his career. I feel like I got a lot of usage out of Day, but there was probably still some stuff I could have done better with him. Troy Lee is the best running back in my opinion. I don't think you're alone in thinking that. Lee and Thomas right now are the front runners for the starting running back job, but I don't think that anyone's going to run away with all the carries, especially early on. I want to see these players when the games matter, so I don't expect anyone to have like 20 carries in the game for quite some time. I want to split it. If I had to play week one right now, I'd start with Thomas, but I'd probably just swap drives. I'd go... Thomas on the first drive, then I'd go Troy Lee, and then I'd kind of go from there and maybe sprinkle in Marcus Payne because his skill set's a little more unique compared to those two. Marty Belafonte might be the odd man out because I don't think that he's our best, like, dynamic running back. If that makes sense. But there will be a definite rotation, and you know I love that. You know I can't wait to swap out running backs all the time and get five different guys to football. It's my dream. Blue Blood New York Giants sends a super chat. JPP is gone, but it's okay. I understand the move. Do you think this means we're going to take Bradley Chubb at two? Also, I'm playing Madden 05 on PS2. That's a, that's a classic one. I remember playing Madden 05 a lot. 
Um, yeah, uh, losing JPP does make sense because they already had put so much money into that defensive line with Olivier Vernon's record-setting contract at the time and then Damon Harrison. Like, something had to give because they're going to shell out the largest receiver contract to Odell Beckham and the largest safety contract to Landon Collins. And that's just not compatible given the defensive line cap and still paying Eli Manning over $20 million a year. So it, it, it makes complete sense, and I think it does make Chubb potentially the number two overall selection if they don't go quarterback. If quarterback is not what they do, I'd have to say it is guaranteed to be Chubb. Hard to pass on pass rush talent like that. Right, super Chats, keep on rolling in. Thank you, everybody. I do appreciate that a lot. David Guerra, best local pizza. By the way, Chicago pizza over anything else. I've had some legit Chicago pizza in the last year um, from, I think it was Giordano's in Chicago. Of course, I didn't get it there. I had it frozen, ordered, and it was excellent. I, I thought it was the weirdest thing because the first step to making one of those pizzas, these deep dish pizzas are really thick. And the first step is to microwave it for 10 minutes. And I almost skipped that step because I'm like, there's no way I'm putting something in the microwave for 10 minutes. But then I was like, ah, who am I to say that it's the wrong thing to do? It's their food. So I did it. And yeah, that was good. Best local pizza, though? I struggle with that one. I really struggle with that one. Um, I don't really have a, a choice right now. I tend to go homemade pizza. A lot of the pizza up north in the Midwest, a lot of it is like this pub-style pizza with the cracker crust, and it's cut into squares, and it's just not pizza to me. And that's like a lot of the pizza if you uh, go around looking for places. You almost have to go to a chain to get like a regular-style pizza. Twenty seven Super Yankees says try using Bo Lee in the Tyler Hartman role. It can also get Warren on the field at quarter at quarterback at times. Also remember you had Odell Beckham in the Rams series. Not only did I have Odell Beckham, but I also had Mike Evans. And I think there was one more big name, potentially, but I can't remember. But yeah, Bo Lee in the Tyler Hartman role. Tyler Hartman, his main role was being uh, one of the side backs, I remember. In, uh, wasn't he one of the, the side backs in the diamond package? Because I, I can picture right now, like, the inside handoffs to him from that formation. There is a shotgun set right here with the tight end in the lineup as a wing. I could put Bo Lee in that role, potentially. Especially if most of these plays are blocking. It would probably make more sense that way than having uh, John Charles, because that's not a receiver role right here. So I could at least do that. A super chat from Sheep Farmer. Have you met a professional athlete in real life? Um, like, meet and have a conversation with? Not really, but just like meet or get an autograph plenty of times. Not plenty. But uh, I've met Kent Herbeck, uh, Twins, I believe he's a Hall of Famer, at uh, spring training. I met him, um, and I've like gone to like Twins Fest before, and so I've gotten like autographs from Ron Gardenhire, and uh, um, there was someone they signed one year and only had for a season, Craig Thomas. I remember getting his autograph, um, Joe Nathan. A lot of this is older stuff, though. This was years ago. Hungry Gamer sends a super chat. Out of all your dynasties, who is the most underrated player you have had? That is a near impossible question to answer. The most underrated player I've ever had. Underrated in terms of what? Like, whether... The viewers liked them, whether I used them or didn't get the most out of them. 
I'd say one underrated player would have been Keiston Holiday in my Jaguars series, just because I didn't get to play with him a ton and he wasn't the top option or anything. But I think that if the series had gone longer, he could have been a star. Ooh, come on, Evans. Or, uh, Brandon Warren. Other options, underrated. Ooh, look at Warren with the spin. How long have you been streaming? Uh, probably about 20 minutes or so. Eric Carter, there's a good one. Eric Carter didn't get the spotlight for long. That's for sure. But he made a lot of key catches. Like every time he went for a catch, it was some spectacular play. I was doing highlight videos at the time, and he was in those a lot. Yep, this is on PlayStation 3, sadly. I wish I didn't have to bust out this console all the time. Especially my HD PBR giving me some problems, and the recording seemed to cut out randomly. I'm able to see it happen, though, so I can fix it, but it's annoying. And plus... After using the DualShock 4 for all these years now on the PlayStation 4, like the DualShock 3 ain't cutting it no more. Donovan Ashley, yep, there's another one. Donovan Ashley and Keiston Holiday, both kind of the, the same type of player. Andrew Johnson, Andrew Ross, oh man, Andrew Ross. When he had those interceptions, that was like, I, I was so happy. Here's Kyle Thomas now with the speed. Here is another formation that I have added. Or was this the one I was just in? Yeah, I think that's the one I was just in. So let's go... I forget if I edited any split shots. I don't think so. Why trips halfback week? See, we had a formation just like this, but the running back is on the other side. I just didn't like that one very much because how often am I going to want to run with Thomas lined up to the right of Warren and then run him left? There's no tight end there, so I have to motion. So it's kind of just uh, makes more sense to go with this formation instead. We're going long for Joyce and Glenn Hayes in good coverage. The halfback that shared carries with Matt Pierre. Well, there was Kevin Martindale. There were a lot of great running backs. Oh, man. Alonzo Holland. That series had so many good running backs. What playbook is he using? This is a custom playbook. I have built this one myself. I'm not sure what my base was because I've gone through and edited this thing so many times that it doesn't resemble what it ever used to be. Jamez Logan. Oh, that's a throwback. That's a throwback to the Vikings franchise. I should get Troy Lee some snaps, huh? Mike Harris here underneath. Let's get Troy Lee some snaps. TJ Jackson. Oh, man. TJ could fly. He was the one who split time with uh, Pierre mostly. Or, uh, yeah, Pierre. Peyton Manning Rams franchise. Everyone remember how that thing ended? If you weren't around for my Rams franchise, I won the Super Bowl one year with Sam Bradford as my quarterback and immediately let him go to New York. And I signed Peyton Manning to try winning one more ring. And we went 13-3. and We had Demarius Thomas on one side, Alshon Jeffrey on the other. That team was a nightmare. We went 13-3. and And in the divisional round of the playoffs... <laughs> The most, like, BS Madden loss ever happened to me. Granted, I did throw a really dumb interception, but I got super unlucky at the end of it. We were beating the Bears in the fourth quarter, and what happened was, um, I think we were up two scores. But I threw a, a really unnecessary interception, 
that led to a score by the Bears and they were able to get an onside kick and score again leaving me just seconds to go and all of a sudden trailing and I threw a Hail Mary that was caught at the one by Tavon Austin and I lost the game and the series ended right there quarterback draw here with Brandon Warren I love this mid screen too but you want to call it when there's not man coverage if you use this play um, I'll show you what I do a lot of times to make sure it's a, it's a look that can work let me call it and I'll show you my adjustment it's pretty simple where was it in this one yeah mid screen all right, so the key here is you don't want to be throwing it to Jones if he's in man coverage because that's corner is going to come down and ruin your day. So what you can do is you can motion your halfback out into the slot, and as you can see, defender moves with him. So now, oh, it was looking like man coverage, but usually I look to see if someone follows him. Now it's not looking like man coverage to me, and it turns out it's not. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing here, and I've just had it work a few times. But I usually motion there to see what kind of look they're going to give me because that outside corner is the biggest problem in that screen. Oh, Michael Riley. Riley was a monster in the Jaguars series. You're absolutely right. I really liked Michael Riley. Brandon Warren. Don't worry, we're going to see some Justin Colbert as well. Oh, wow. Please block for my quarterback. We'll also move around and do some red zone drills and all kinds of stuff here. Well, not really drills, just plays from the red zone. Wide open Hayden John Charles. A super chat here from Coach Mom. For scouting, wait to give prospects scholarships until you're in the lead for them unless you risk losing them. Helps with early Insta commits. Yeah, I would actually pay attention to that now. I think we have our first Insta commit upgrade. I can't remember 100%, but I think we do. Otherwise, I do just give them out kind of right away. Nice throw. Mike Harris makes the catch. David Guerra sends a super chat. Can Blackjack make Caleb's son a prospect? So you can say, son, kick us off every time. That's from my Backbreaker series. After I replaced son in there, that never happened anymore. But hey, maybe. I do need a kicker for the future. I should be seeing that new cast of prospects pretty soon. This tight end screen is amazing. I love the tight end screen. It works in Madden too. It's in my Bears playbook. It's from an empty shotgun formation called like Y screen or something like that. It's incredible. Derek Anelli, he made some plays. I gotta keep an encyclopedia of all my players, teams, and stuff. Maybe it's a little bit late for that. I'm already a uh, handful of years into this thing. Now, think of all the things you remember from my past series, and then try to think about how much have we forgotten. There's probably a lot of stuff that if someone were able to remember it, I'd be like, wow, I would have never remembered that ever again. That was incredible. Barry Inseki was so up and down. Yeah, Inseki finished that series super strong, though. The sad thing was when Steven Smiley, my favorite running back ever, um, it really was just a four or five game stretch where he was outstanding. Those last four games with Steven Smiley, 
I'll tell you right now, I've been thinking more about doing that Kane's Classics idea I talked about last year, where I was going to kind of make a... Uh, like, uh, not like ESPN 30 for 30, but something along those lines where it would be just like looking back at stuff and talking about different players and moments from different series. I would actually love to do an episode if I get around to it of uh, those four games with Steven Smiley because he helped carry that offense so much. Bring back Vince Taylor. Oh man, Vince for UTSA. I got to use him more, I think, in Blitz the League than I did in uh, the Dynasty. That Blitz the League playthrough was fun. We had some wild games in there. By the way, speaking of games, uh, Bears Franchise Week 2 is getting posted as soon as this stream is over. It's uh, on my channel and ready to go. All I got to do is set up the public and you can watch it. So... You can go from the stream right into that if you like. 27 Super Yankees. Darren Rose needs to be in the Canes Classics. Yeah, Darren Rose was another good one. I've had good slot receivers, haven't I, over the years? A lot of you want to see the Kane Hall of Fame. I, I really want to do the Hall of Fame. Oh, Caesar Butler. Yeah, the Mr. Hurricane Hall of Fame. We're ready for it. Kane's Classics needs to happen. I do think with my new kind of uh, way of doing uh, content that I can get around to some of those side things a little bit easier. Obviously, I run two channels here, and I try to do a lot of content. Probably try to do too much content. But what I've been doing the last few days that I'm liking a lot is I'm... Instead of uh, working on like a, a Callus spell episode and then working on a let's play and kind of bouncing around like that I'm starting to just uh, focus on one channel at a time Well, not a hundred percent, but My idea is like the other day I recorded I think four let's plays in a row So that gave me obviously I try to post one a day if I can that gave me uh, three days of videos because I wanted to post uh, two on one day. And that gave me two straight days where I could just focus on main channel content. And doing that, the last days that I've been making main channel content, I've now gotten to a good spot with this channel. So I can kind of flip around from one to the other. And if I didn't have some other things going on right now, I would have had more time to get ahead on this channel. But basically... This new uh, setup is allowing me to uh, better focus on each channel. And so one day, I'll be doing Let's Plays only. And then, you know, I'll do all my football stuff. I'll do all the baseball stuff. And if I still have time, then I can obviously maybe do a Fortnite video or something of that nature. But dedicating the days has been good so far. Just to keep things on track. David Guerra sends another super chat. Better back up Andy Beckwith or Andrew Johnson. Give me Andrew Johnson. He had to do it for a full season. Beckwith finished strong, but he basically did the Nick Foles. And I missed the super chat here. I apologize from Yasin the Filth Monster. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. Remember Andre McDonald from the Minnesota Dynasty? My favorite player in the Minnesota Dynasty, mainly because he went to my high school, Hopkins, Minnesota. I forget who else went to Hopkins. I feel like someone else on the Vikings went there. Or maybe it was somebody else. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, I do remember Andre McDonald. He was another fun receiver in that series. That was very early on, so that's a little bit hard to remember these days. I think you were number 12. Oh, yeah. There's no forgetting Doug Duckett. Doug Duckett. Dropping passes as a freshman, making big plays as a senior. We all liked Doug Duckett quite a bit. So if you notice here, the pass coverage has been a little bit tighter and I think it's playing pretty well compared to what we usually see. And consider I don't have the best receivers here either. Four, 
Some tight windows there. See, we want you want to see plays like that for realism's sake. Oh, there's no. I don't even have to mention Nate Bell because we all know what an icon he was. He is probably one of my three favorite players to have come through the channel. If you force me right now to name a top three, it would be Andy McKenzie, Nate Bell, Reggie Shepard. But please don't make me pick only three. <laughs> oh, man. Warren, show off that arm strength. Let's go! No! Who is starting at quarterback this year? It's going to be a team effort, and uh, play is going to decide it. Brandon Warren is going to play, and Justin Colbert is going to play. Justin Colbert will be the quarterback in most key situations, so you can call him the starter, basically. Warren is going to kind of be a role-playing quarterback. He might get some full possessions at times, but like last two minutes of a half, the start a game, probably going to be all Colbert there. Nate Bell versus Reggie Shepard. I loved making that video. That was really fun, putting two of my best players. Or uh, No, that was Lance Adams. Lance Adams, my bad. I could have done one with Nate Bell and Reggie Shepard. That would have been a pretty significant height difference, though. The Lance Adams one was really fun. Lance Adams was kind of, to me, he was the one that got away. Like, he was literally a Randy Moss, Randy Moss caliber prospect. But I just couldn't use him to his full potential in Madden 15. It wasn't possible. Because the, the pass DB interactions weren't in the game yet. You couldn't throw it up to receivers until Madden 16 and reliably make plays. I can't believe we played football for so many years on these games with the wide receiver DB interactions that didn't allow you to throw it up to those kind of receivers. And this is one of the games where you can't do that. I still really enjoy NCAA 14, though, after all these years. Really enjoying uh, practice today. Ooh, let that one go. Let Warren play some receiver. You should also use Warren in the Wildcat. Yeah, that's a no-brainer to get him there. Let me shorten the field a bit here. Let's see what Warren can do. We know his arm strength is impressive, but how about when arm strength isn't as useful when the field is shortened? Let's use him down here at the 25. Red zone fringe, as they call it. Joyce is making a lot of plays, and that's important for us to have a playmaker like him. If he gets hurt, there is no real backup to Carl Joyce. Actually, the best backup to Joyce would be Brandon Warren. Oops. Ooh, look at Joyce pulling that one down. Dominic Carter was a monster. That's absolutely right. He was one of the players that really surprised me because his ratings weren't that good, but he sure played good. And his best plays came at critical moments in the game. Remember the Fred Arnold game, too, when he went to Colorado, I think it was, and we played against them and he intercepted me? He was the first villain on my channel. 
There haven't been too many villains, but Amari Cooper is certainly one. We don't talk about him anymore. Another villain would have been Ty... Remember the Tyrone uh, Campbell situation? When I was recruiting him to be our quarterback, and then all of a sudden he's going to Iowa to play receiver, and we have to uncover uh, a person you might have known from St. Paul, Minnesota, an athlete by the name of Andy McKenzie instead. The rest is history. Super chat here from Quan Edwards. Do you use directional passing with the left stick to maximize the accuracy or inaccuracy of your quarterbacks? Yeah, it's muscle memory at this point. Like, I throw pretty much every throw with directional passing of some sort. And I've been doing that for years. Ever since it was first implemented, it's been almost 10 years I've been building this muscle memory, so it's not going anywhere. I think we should get some running plays in here. Let's go slot. Let's just go inside zone. Let's get some reps here for Troy Lee. There we go, Hayden. Get to the second level. Bryce Wiley is our best offensive lineman. They should shut that one down, probably. Did you just see sh Did you see Glenn Hayes? My dude was out here 15 yards off the line of scrimmage in a three-point stance. What are you doing out here? You want to rush the passer? Come on now. That's a little ridiculous right there. Best old lineman you ever had? How about Delonte Moore? He was pretty good. Is it Bo Lee or Troy Lee? This is Troy Lee. Bo Lee wears 15. Ridiculous right there. Troy Lee. Oh, look at Jameel Butler. This dude flies around the field. Oh, man. Let's start running some stretches now. Hayes was about to show you his 40 speed. Hey, he went from that three point stance into like a back pedal. I guess I did move him to a new position. He does have to learn it, but I didn't think he'd be that far away from knowing what to do. <laughs> oh, come on, Hayden. That was that was an ugly block attempt. We don't have a great blocking tight end. Hayden John Charles run blocking is like a 71. So that's one thing I do want to recruit. Give me give me an Anthony Fasano. I don't need anything special. How about a Phillips Supernaw? Just give me a blocking tight end. Pre play Bo Lee at quarterback when it's his senior day. We'll see. A full game? Definitely not. Part of a game? Maybe. Troy Evans is our best offensive player. Some dark times. Oh, man. I did my best to hype him up before the series. And, yeah, he was like a gadget player who wasn't really that good of a gadget player. I know. But that's the whole idea. That was the idea when the game started out. And it's not really rare to see teams use a player like that who's not super dynamic, but they use him like a gadget player. I remember watching Tyler Boyd play at Pitt, and they did absolutely everything with this dude. They moved him around the formation, they got him the ball in all sorts of ways. Probably didn't let him throw it, but they used him 
like you'd expect a team to use Tavon Austin. And Tyler Boyd is like just a possession receiver, solid number two guy is his prob probable ceiling. And they used him like I used Troy Evans. No love for Rhett Ellison. I got love for Rhett Ellison. He gave the Vikings like four good years, five good years, whatever it was. Here we go, Troy. The weak side stretch. How do you make your dynasties realistic? I always end up with five stars that nobody goes after within five years of a 99 overall team. I don't know. I think part of it is that having the team where I have them does make it hard to recruit because a lot of the top prospects are from other locations where we don't have pipelines and we still don't have the best established program yet so having like pro potential isn't going to be maxed out it's hard for us to compete for those players and last year I tried to go for five stars and it just didn't work we got turned down hard and that was one of the reasons why our recruiting class was a little underwhelming for most of the year. I put a lot of resources into players that had no interest whatsoever. Alright, we've seen Troy Lee a ton. Why don't we get Marcus Payne some more snaps? I feel like I still want to see him more and hopefully get him a role in the offense. By the way, for Bo Lee, anybody wondering, 79 speed, which is solid for a fullback tight end. 85 break tackle, 73 trucking. He has 70 catching, 78 throw power, 73 accuracy, and then 71 run blocking. Like, I could use him as a tight end. What is his overall at tight end? You want to see him play some tight end right now? be a 61 he can't start twice are we calling fullback starters now let's let Bo Lee play some tight end where he has 39 awareness super chat here from Turk Warren will lose us games if he plays a lot of quarterback. He misses throws standing still, and a better record means better recruits and five stars. Not worth it. I will find a balance, and when he's in the game, it's not going to be... Well, I'm not saying he won't throw it, but the idea isn't like we're out. he's out there because of what he can do with his arm. We're not there yet with him. He's obviously a better runner than a passer right now. So we can do some like bootlegs and some passes that are just not going to happen with Colbert. But as far as having him be a pocket passer in game, not much of that early on. Expect a lot of the option stuff when he gets into the game. It'll be a lot more specialized than I'm making it look here. Oh, a bad fumble there for Marcus Payne. Payne's a bigger back. And I think after a couple of years, he could definitely have good potential. Um, I hyped him up. I still think the talent's there. If you want to see ratings, let's take a look. Right now, he's kind of in that phase where, you know, everything's kind of decent, but nothing stands out but speed. 93 speed for him, 80 agility, 83 acceleration. That's underwhelming. For like a, a one cut back or just uh, a back that can run with quickness 76 break tackle 72 truck 72 elusive it's all kind of average he does you know spin and juke are there but how much of that can you use right now his best asset is his straight line speed But he also has a little more power than our other running backs, so we should get him those reps right now. What are the chances that JD will be signed by the Chicago Bears? I don't plan to bring Ja'Cory Day into Madden 18. 
but there's a very good chance that I use him in Madden 19 in some capacity, especially if they actually touch player career mode this year. Are we getting any yards after contact here, Marcus? Most of these look like first contact stops. Oh, another fumble! That's two fumbles in like 10 carries. Getting rocked by Shannon Evans. Everyone's dishing it out to Marcus today. Roscoe didn't. Uh, I wish Roscoe had gotten drafted. He would have definitely been drafted in the NFL if he were like a real player. He moves way too well for a back of his size. And I'm telling you right now, Lamar Williams would have been at least a day two pick. Another fumble. Alright, I think we've seen enough for now. Give McKinley a chance? I should. Can he get some yards after contact? What's the carrying on Marcus Payne? Because that was brutal. His carrying's a 65. Uh, Troy Lee's a 66, Kyle Thomas is 71. McKinley a 94. Taj body, that was fun. I had uh, some rosters on like NCAA 12 or 13, and Taj Boyd was one of my running. Was, I was playing with Clemson, and I had Taj Boyd, but someone spelled his name wrong, so it was Taj Body. And then Taj Body became a. Which series was it I had Taj Boyd as a backup quarterback for like a year? That, that was Panthers. I already remember. Yeah, it was Panthers. I can't say there's going to be a primary back this year, but Thomas and Lee are probably going to get the, the share of the carries early on. Who's going to be the starter when we take the field first? Probably Thomas. At least in week one. I remember in the first practice, McKinley did do a decent job at least falling forward and getting one or two yards that other running backs wouldn't. Certainly when McKinley takes contact in here, it's different. Did you see the animations when Marcus Payne was getting hit? He was getting flattened. Whereas McKinley here, he seems to be winning a lot of these contact battles pretty consistently. He's like a stronger Matt Asiata. Not very fast, but he catches the ball well. And sure, he'll get some yards after contact. You need three yards, he'll get you three. You need four yards, he'll get you three. He's that kind of a running back. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Where are the cashews, Kane? Uh, not here right now. I wasn't actually hungry for cashews. I'm actually kind of hungry for an apple. With peanut butter. Like I'm six years old. Yeah, McKinley's proving enough to me. He deserves the short yardage goal line stuff. Let's get Marty Belafonte out there. So Belafonte has 93 speed. He's not strong. He's not that kind of a running back. He's 190 pounds. He does have better acceleration than Marcus Payne, but not as good as Thomas or Troy Lee. He isn't going to break a lot of tackles. And I think that his best trade is, again, his speed. McKinley reminds me of Eddie Benson. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of similarities there. I'm glad that I at least was able to close his uh, career strong, Eddie Benson's. I remember his last season and 
getting him into the game. He finally had enough speed to start doing some stuff. I think Troy Lee is going to emerge as a really good back. Uh, there's a chance that we have some real surprises this year on the offensive side. We certainly could use a couple surprises. Good finish there by Marty B. Can you show us Warren at running back? Uh, I could. Give him a few carries at least. Although we've seen him at quarterback running. So I'm not sure if there's a real big need for that. Run a New England style rotation. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit easier to handle substitutions in here, but we're going to have a platoon of running backs, much like you see with the Patriots. You know, in the beginning of the year, they had like Mike Gillisley getting goal line carries, and you never know if one day it's going to be they're throwing it to James White or throwing it to Deion Lewis. You never know if Rex Burkhead's going to get the carries that day. Like... Patriot backfield is really difficult to narrow down. Packers are signing Tremont Williams to a two-year deal. I remember when Williams left them to go to Cleveland. That was a few years ago, and then he went to Arizona, actually played pretty well, and now back with Green Bay. Certainly not solving their cornerback issues in my eyes. Why do players transfer in the game? Um, a lot of them just want to get more playing time. But occasionally, you'll also get the player who wants to transfer to be close to home. That one's more rare, but it happened. It's happened before. throw it to Bo Lee a couple times. Actually, I'll do that with Colbert. Let me just run a few more of these with Kyle Thomas and we'll switch it up and put Colbert in the game. Um, as far as having Warren as like a regular player, when he's not at quarterback, will he be at receiver? I don't think on a full-time basis because I don't want to like injure him. He does have a lower injury rating than a lot of players. I don't want to give him too many touches. But if we are struggling with receiver, I might get him into the game. Like with Harris, Jones, and Joyce, I think I'm okay with our 1-2-3. Don't expect a lot of four receiver sets this year. It'll be a lot more like when this series got underway. And we didn't really spread the field much because our fourth and fifth receivers weren't that dynamic. Do you like Rodney Adams at all? Uh, thought he was okay in the preseason. I like Stacy Coley more. He's with the Colts now. Let me just get a few more Troy Lee on the same run. Adrian Peterson just signed with the Packers. I'm not falling for that one either. That'd be hilarious though. Yeah, I'll change up some music here. the best kicker you ever had I don't know they're all kind of the same in the game sadly um, by the way you like the song choice it's upbeat it's fun um, 
best kicker, though? <laughs> I don't know. How about Shane Wood? I'm gonna go Shane Wood. When will week one be uploaded? Um, week one will probably... It's hard for me to say right now because I haven't gotten the recruits yet to put into the game. And with MLB The Show coming out, I am going to be putting some attention on that. And I should be playing that tomorrow and making content tomorrow. So, to be determined. But I'll tell you right now, Bears Week 2 is coming up after this stream. Bears Week 2 will be going up as soon as this stream is over. Did you redshirt Rodney Hall? I did. He's a sophomore too, so once we redshirt him and he comes back, three years of eligibility. That's huge. Here we go, Troy. Derek Vant sends a super chat. Is it good that the Giants signed Frank Gore? And also that they're going after Brock Osweiler. I'm not sure why they're going after Osweiler. But Gore, yeah. I think, like, obviously he went to school in Miami. And there's that storyline that, you know, I love. I love that kind of stuff. It makes sports fun. But uh, I think he's actually a really good fit there. Because you have Kenyon Drake, who proved to be really good last year. But I think if you get Gore in there, he's still giving meaningful snaps. Frank Gore is still a good running back. And I think that he and Drake can be a pretty good tandem. Granted, the offensive line has to get a little bit uh, shored up. But I do like that tandem. In theory, Gore's been very durable and reliable. He'll give them good carries, and then Kenyon Drake can come out and give them the, the lightning. Harold Kaufman sends a super chat. We all know Kazer the Laser was Goat Punter. He was. Kazer the Laser. He lived up to that nickname pretty con uh, consistently. Wait, did I say... Did I say something wrong about Gore going to Miami? Did I mess that up? Yeah, McKinley is going to be used kind of like Eddie Benson at the goal line. Unless Troy Lee can show that he can get there because I think he's showing a pretty good ability to run between the tackles. But... It's hard to deny that McKinley isn't the best uh, power runner on this team. Hurricane, are you playing fantasy baseball? I will not. I'm not playing season long, but I will play some daily fantasy. I said Giants. Why would I say Giants? I gotta roll that back. Why on earth would I say Giants? Oh my. I can't figure that one out, guys. I don't know. Going to the Giants. I know I said Miami a couple times in that, that sequence, but wow, I didn't realize I botched that. Alright. Why don't we get Justin Colbert into the game, considering that he is our true starting quarterback? I've just been using Warren because, you know, he's new and wanted to get a feel for his dynamic play but Justin Colbert is the best quarterback for this team right now they're both going to play but they're not going to play equally and they're certainly not going to do the same things when they are playing let's back up a little bit here Troy Lee getting some carries he shows good power too though I need to see his ratings again I don't need you to necessarily break tackles for me, but I do absolutely need you to fall forward and to get those extra yards. Nice. Mike Harris, 99 catching. That's what he's about.
One way I could see Brandon Warren getting some regular playing time, though, is if we're playing against a team whose offensive line or whose defensive line is just dominating us so much that I don't want a pocket passer in the game. But I think that's probably rare territory. Look at Bo Lee. Bo Lee and Troy Lee on the field. And there's Bo. Mike Wallace to the Eagles? I can actually see that happening. Please don't be lying to me because I actually believe that one. Seventy-nine accuracy, but it has a high ceiling. What? Yeah. Well, the accuracy is going to go up over the years. That'll develop. And once it's mid-80s, I'm not really going to worry about it as much. But for now, it's certainly a concern. Colbert airs it out. Oh, look at Bull Lee. Check this play out. Not much separation here. It is Glenn Hayes after all. But the ball placement. That's what you get with Justin Colbert. And the catch is pretty nice. Thank you for the super chat, Sam. And Sam asks, What are your thoughts about Le'Veon Bell's contract situation with the Steelers? If I were Bell, I would not budge. That franchise tag is a nice chunk of guaranteed money that is already worth more than most running backs are getting. So, I mean, Le'Veon Bell is a unique talent. There aren't many backs like him, and there are not many backs that fill the roles that he fills. He touched the ball last year 400 times. 400. 400. You know who usually touches the ball 400 times? A center and a quarterback. But no, Le'Veon Bell carried the ball 400 times as a runner and a receiver a year ago. He's doing a lot for that team. You can't treat him like other running backs. And plus, I'm sure he's smart enough to know that his shelf life isn't great given the way he plays running back and how much he's being used. Can he have a 10-year career doing that? Hard in that capacity very hard so he's got a window here to make all the money that he can and right now the franchise tag is his best option if he's not getting a long-term big guarantee contract did i call this the same play i thought i called random Is this a rebuilding year for the Warhawks? On offense, it kind of is. We'll have to see how it all plays out, though. So much is different, but I don't know how much of our change is going to be positive. <coughs> Sorry. Hopefully, we have a lot of positive change with this team. We find some receivers that can make plays. Our running backs impress us. And maybe Brandon Warren gives us a spark that moves the needle in the right direction. One more thing before we get into the regular season. Should we keep Troy Lee's number at 42 or should we move it? It is a pretty unique number for a running back, which that itself can be a reason to keep it. But should we keep it at 42? Yes, Colbert is also going to get better alongside Warren, for sure. Oops. And I think Colbert's going to be a really good pocket passer. Oh, come on, Carl. Uh-oh, that was a weird meeting there. Make it higher, lower, do 44. I could get down with 44. Let's 
go normal Y slot. Love this formation. Puts the tight end out in the slot. I wish we had uh, an athlete, but I guess Hayden John Charles did that job pretty well last year, even though he's not the best athlete. Kind of a Kyle Rudolph style tight end is how I always talked about him. Justin Colbert. Look at that throw, and that's why Colbert is the starting quarterback, and he will get the vast majority of pass attempts. Mike Harris. Yeah, Bo Lee. The Bo Dozer. Am I right? I still like, I think about this probably like once a month. Remember when I had Joe Preston as uh, a corner in the Minnesota dynasty and he was doing well in a practice and I said, Joe Preston is in Preston and the chat ate me alive. I think about that. Like I said, like once a month. It's been four days since Bears franchise week two when you, or when you plan on uploading week two, right after the stream is over, it's going up. I would love to get an OJ Howard type tight end. Hard to find sometimes. Kane just ruined my spring break with that pun. <laughs> Where's Hayden? I'm just kind of learning more players that we don't see all that often, so I'm getting Bo Lee some tight end snaps, and he's doing pretty good overall. Here's the deep ball in the end zone for Amante Jones. I want to get back to the bow dozer. Oh, knocked away. There it is. But what I'm so uh, interested with Bo is what he can do after the catch. Granted, his route running isn't going to be great, so look at this. Look at this guy, how strong his hands are. Four two five defense, Kane. Hey, we run nickel enough. That's what a four two five defense is. That was ugly. Right down the middle to Bowley. Chris Ryan sends a super chat. Most underrated and entertaining YouTuber by far. Thank you, Chris. That's awful kind of you. Troy Lee. Oh, Troy. Nice run. That 99 acceleration. That's fun. Shannon Evans does not fall for the back juke very often. Oh, I guess Troy hasn't learned what it means to be a Mr. Hurricane running back. You must always be prepared for the lateral. It's in the handbook. I remember that 6 OT game against Michigan in the Minnesota Dynasty. That was one of my favorite games. That was a classic. I didn't think that game was ever going to end. I haven't had a lot of long overtime games in NCAA. And I feel like Kalis spell never goes to overtime. I'm sure we have a couple times. I know for sure we have before, but it is not often. See that back juke? It ain't working. Watch me thread this. Oh, man. Nasty. Thought of having a podcast? There are a couple podcast questions there. I've thought about it. But I already tried doing so many things. Doing another, like, full-time or, like, regular 
deal and handling all that. I think for now I'm happy, you know, essentially treating my live streams almost like a podcast where I can just talk about stuff and answer questions. Especially because, like, I don't know if anyone would want to, you know, I'd have to find, like, uh, if I was going to do it on my own or if I was going to do it with somebody else. Um, like, either way, I'd want questions to work off of or another person to work off of. And this way, like, I'm getting instant feedback and the conversation just keeps going. So I like it here. Throwing this to Mike Harris. I wish the double moves worked in video games. I just like seeing that 99 catch in action. It's filthy. Maybe Bo Lee gets some tight end snaps this year. He does have a decent blocking ability. He's shown he can catch the football and he can initiate contact. Check this out. This is Bo Lee. Just bouncing off of Shannon Evans, an all American safety, best player on the team. Just bought Madden 18 solely because I watched your Browns rebuild videos. Thanks for the new hobby. That's awesome, man. I'm, I hope you have fun doing the rebuilds. It, it can be a fun way to enjoy Madden. I know that I've liked getting into that side of the game and being okay, not simul or being okay simulating and not having full control over all the games. It's a different kind of experience and it works. It's a good time. And that Browns rebuild has been one of the biggest surprises I've ever done on YouTube. It's the, if you look at just peer views, it's the most popular series I have ever done, period. The, the most popular regular series. A super chat here again from Chris Ryan saying, too bad you can't finish deals, hashtag never forget Cooper. Nope, I can't finish the deal. I'm such a bad negotiator that I can offer $7 million more than anybody else and still get rejected. That's a big slap in the face. Like, what would it have taken for me to sign Amari Cooper there? If I offered him $60 million, would he have accepted it? You'd think so, right? But why didn't he accept 47? Do you like physical copies of games or digital? Um, I can... I don't really have a true preference anymore. I used to be like, yes, I want the physical copy every time. But now, after getting a lot of digital games, it's like... The convenience is nice. But I tend to go physical on, uh... My games I use for uh, like videos for whatever reason. Like I have physical copies of like Madden and MLB and whatnot. Best games on the channel? Uh, I'm not sure if I could do a top five off the top of my head. But I would include the Michigan game, that six overtime spectacular. I'd probably include the first uh, Vikings franchise Super Bowl with that dramatic comeback we made. I might include the first Minnesota Dynasty Bowl victory because of the comeback we made in that. Not national championship, bowl, bowl game.
And then there were so many classics in the Jaguars, um, Panthers, and Chargers series. Octo Dad is my favorite series on YouTube. That was a fun Let's Play. I liked Octo Dad. I want to. I'm not sure if it should have a sequel, but Octo Dad was a good game. There's not much I'd change in that game. It was a nice length of game, not to wear out its welcome or anything. It had some good humor. The gameplay I thought was pretty fun. It was a good video game. What's Colbert's throw power and accuracy? Um, I want to say his throw power is high 80s and his accuracy is like an 86. Let me compare our quarterbacks here. 88 throw power, 89 throw accuracy. So very accurate, much more so than uh, Brandon Warren. But Warren, of course, as a runner, there's more you can do there with option scrambling so I do want to have kind of the best of both worlds with our quarterback situation this year but also Warren's gonna get some snaps at receiver uh, UFC I just don't know enough about and there are enough sports games where I don't know anything about I'm just getting my uh, feet wet with 2k and I'm having a lot of fun with that if you didn't watch that last stream I did with the Timberwolves, it was a really fun stream. And I think it was a really entertaining game. I'm starting to get the hang of some things in there. Nice spin there by Troy Lee. I'm telling you, I think Bo Lee, thanks to your suggestions in the comments, Bo Lee has earned some tight end snaps. I like those broken tackles. Now, tight end one snaps are not likely. Twin tight end snaps are likely. <laughs> XFL franchise, if they make a game, I will check it out. I do not expect one. Look at Joyce. The Bo Dozer, no, deny Jameel Butler. Overthrown. Now Colbert will miss some passes from time to time. No quarterback is perfect here. Look at Troy Lee. Not bad. Please stop saying that. <laughs> uh, we're having fun. Are you ever going to move Kalispell to a Power 5 conference? There's a good chance that eventually we do go to the Pac-12. But the Mountain West is turning out to be more fun than I ever expected. And I'm in no hurry to leave. I'm trying to develop to develop uh, rivalries with those teams, and we're getting good games. And as long as that's the case, um, I want to stay. If we start getting better recruiting classes, and it looks like we can actually compete with those Power 5 teams, then we'll look to make a move. But until then, we're going to stay put in the Mountain West. We've already been in the Mountain West longer than I thought we would in this series. Oh, a fumble. Just don't make it a habit. Some 
Sometimes the directional passing in here doesn't go where I want it to. Not often, but sometimes it seems to ignore what I'm saying. Bowley up top. Nope, through his hands. What's a good team in Madden to use to build up a defense and running attack? You want to build a defense and a running attack. All right, let me think here. Team that could use some defensive help first and foremost. Well, okay, here's one. How about the Green Bay Packers? I'm a Viking fan, but I have to admit that's a good option for what you want. Their defense needs a lot of work right now. At, in the secondary, primarily. And their backfield certainly needs to get figured out for the future. Unless you're content with Ty Montgomery. Completely. But that would be one choice. Another option to build up a defense and a rushing attack. You could look to build uh, Oakland's defense up around Khalil Mack and uh, figure out their running situation. They have some young guys that I like with uh, DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard. But they're this year going to have Doug Martin and uh, Marshawn Lynch. Also, the Detroit Lions. You could definitely draft a running back there, and their defense has a couple players, but still could use work. Oh, Carl. I did not enjoy that drop touchdown. You like that one? <laughs> View counts me cut in half after that one catches up to the stream. <laughs> oh. Bo leave Kane, yes. Bo leave in the bodo bo dozer. I'm messing myself up now. When is the next T-Wolves stream? I'm not sure right now. Oh, Colts, yes. Rushing, running attack and defense, absolutely. Next Wolves stream. Uh, probably next week sometime. Just with MLB coming out, that's going to be holding a lot of my attention. I support the joke. There's at least one. There's at least one. Unsubbing that pun was horrible. <laughs> Let's get Kyle Thomas back in the game. Any other receivers? What's up about uh, Jones for Jermaine Finley, who I keep almost calling Jermichael Finley? And on defense, I would like to face the one and only Boogie Turner. Oh, we're not sleeping on Amante Jones. I like Amante Jones. But I am taking him out of the game because we've already seen him quite often in this series. And now it's changed. Mike Harris. Leon Daniels. Thank you for the super chat, Leon. Glad you could afford some time here out of your busy schedule. What with owning uh, an NFL franchise, being a super mega baseball player, and having a, a motivational speaking tour, like you gotta be pretty busy. And uh, the super chat from Leon was Browns, Jets, or Lions for 2019. Well, that really depends on your franchise flavor. What kind of series do you want? Because with the Browns, that would be a growing series. The Browns are going to have an extremely young roster, and your main objective is going to be developing the talent they already have. With the Jets, 
There is certainly a lot to be rebuilt. So you're going to have to draft a lot more in that series. Lions, that's more take a mid-tier team and give them the finishing touches type of franchise. I'll probably get Warren some more snaps in here again now that we've seen both quarterbacks quite a bit. I haven't played Warren at all at receiver today. That's the one thing that I haven't done. Any more NCAA 14 dynasties in the future? After Kalispell, I don't know what's going to be next, but also... Like, we still have such a long way to go with Callus Spell that I'm not even thinking about that. If I had to guess right now, we're going over 10 seasons in this series. Look at Bo Lee. I mean, think about it. This is year 7, and this is kind of the start of a new era on offense. And so if you consider maybe three, four years with this era, that takes us all the way to year 10 or 11. And then, is it going to be done there? I have no idea how long this series is going to go. I could see it going 15 years, potentially. Oh my. That throw. I thought it was going to be caught, too. Carl Joyce. Hashtag where's payment? Dustin Payment. He's not even third on the depth chart. That's Rashawn Phillips. So that payment's going to be uh, late. Thoughts on Marquis Cole and my Bears franchise. I think Cole could be what Harmon Whitaker was to my Chargers. That height, weight, speed guy that was raw, that I just developed into a really good receiver. The question is, will Marquis ever get that chance? He's our like wide receiver five right now. My receiver trio in the Chargers franchise was so unfair. What are your thoughts on Carolina signing Jarius Wright? I, I like Jarius Wright. Just when you want to write him off, he makes a nice catch on third down and moves the chains a couple times for you. That's really what he did in Minnesota. Ran crossing patterns and really just a lot of five and seven yard throws designed to move the chains. He does have good hands. And he's a reliable player. That's a good way to characterize him. He might not make the, the biggest plays, but it's not like he's slow. Does have some speed. Probably best fit in the slot. And in Carolina, I expect that he could have a decent role. Larger than he had with the Vikings. And I think he could become one of uh, Cam's best weapons on third down. And Norv Turner, their new offensive coordinator, knows a little bit about what he can do. Good throw by Warren. Be nice to my running back. Defense is sure uh, hitting hard today. As Bo Lee makes another tough catch. Let's try another uh, formation with a bit more running. Come on, Finley. Are you definitely playing Vandy week one? Yeah, I'm sticking with the schedule because of the pull on the recent episode.
All right, here comes Joyce. I like some of these uh, receiver option plays where they get involved too. Some of these options, though, are I don't like dealing with all the motion. I can't get my reps in fast with motion. It's throwing me off. Okay, Bo Lee in this formation. Well, there are some receiver. There's a lot of receiving in that one. This one does have a lot of running. making sure I'm caught up here on Super Chats. Thank you for all those, by the way. Much appreciated. We are caught up. I like this little screen pass here. I'm a big fan of running back motion plays. Swing screens and into the slot, whatever. Warren. Oh, almost. This ain't gonna work. Or maybe. Maybe. That was a strange play. I, I didn't even know what I was doing at first. I thought it was triple option. It's a screen where you fake a handoff and then I ran out here, pump faked, and then got it away. There's Kyle Thomas. Nice throw. And then Warren on the comeback to Mike Harris. Don't ever run that play. Yeah, that one might get me into some trouble. If I'm not careful. I don't think it's a bad play, though. Especially Amante Jones out there as the blocker. Yeah. Now I want to run it. Uh, Jones isn't in there right now, but that's, that's exactly where he'd be. Jones is a really good downfield blocker. Oh, I can do that? I'm a little bit confused by some of these plays. It's good to have the option back, though. I did miss it after not having Marquise Walker for two seasons. I like the new uh, formations I added, too, to utilize it. There's also this normal flex. No, this isn't it. I think I got rid of the old one, maybe, because I'm not seeing it. I had to take some stuff out to add the new stuff. Let's go split slot. Love this formation with Marquise Walker. Will Curry Peters be as good as Nate Bell? That's a high bar. I don't know about that. I hope so. Warren! Nice throw. Another good pers precision. A good precision throw by Brandon Warren. <laughs> Go 
And Troy Lee really is making his case, though, to be the starting running back. I like yards after contact quite a bit. Oh, look at Finley. Tell me about this spin. That's pretty special right there. Watch this spin. We go one way and then back the other way. Do I think that Warren could be the next Andy McKenzie? It's possible. In year one, probably not. I really want to know how this year is going to play out because once I get into the game and start playing, then I have to react to things. I can say all this stuff about what I want to do right now, but I mean, we're going to get into games. We're going to see stuff work. We're going to see stuff not work. We're going to see, you know, what the game flow dictates and, you know, are we going to be down early in our first game? Are we going to be down late? And that's where you're going to start seeing things make sense. It's so hard to put everything into place right now because a lot of it depends on situations and how things actually play. The theories are all nice and you got to have an idea of where you're going, but that doesn't mean that our map is taking us to the destination we've been talking about necessarily. So with these two quarterbacks and all these different running backs, I think we'll figure out some things that we do really well. That was nice. Are you going to run Wildcats? Um, maybe. Maybe. But I already want to use Warren as kind of our switch things up option. I'm not sure if Wildcat is super necessary. Don't catch him. It's all good. The deep ball. 99 catching just dropped one for me. That's nice. Ooh, that was a nice little run. Get off of him. So Mike Harris has impressed me. Troy Lee, Brandon Warren, Carl Joyce. And of course we're spending a lot of this talking about the offense. It's a bit easier to evaluate them here. But the defense is flying around and hitting pretty hard, and I have liked a lot of Jermichael, uh, Jermichael Finley. I'm not even trying to say his name. Jameel Butler. <laughs> Who tackled him right there? Look at Troy Lee. Troy Lee taking out Brandon Warren. Kane, two things. Who should I do a rebuild for like you are doing with the Browns in Madden 18? Also, any tips from your personal experience? Oh, if you're going to do it like I do on uh, the Browns, I mean, you could go with the Dolphins. Need a lot of work. You could go with the Jets. Uh, if you want to go into the NFC, then maybe a team like the Bears could still use some help and development. But uh, as far as tips go... I would look for mid-round value in the draft because that's those players are easier for you to obtain. 
I would... I'm not sure if I have a lot of tips, really. Like, draft value is one of the biggest ones. Um, upgrade your coach. Make sure you're upgrading your coach and unlocking, like, XP upgrades and, like, free agent signing influence. Make sure you're not giving out big contracts to players that you aren't really committed to because signing bonuses are going to eat away at your funds. You need to make sure you're making good money. Otherwise, um, you're going to have a hard time even getting your team close to the salary cap. That's if you're playing as an owner, which I do. Owner makes it a little bit more difficult than coach. Because as a coach, you get the full salary cap and have no worries about revenue. Whereas as an owner, you have to not only make the money, you don't not only spend the money, but you also got to make the money. And that makes it more difficult. How much longer are you thinking about streaming? I'm probably about to wrap up here. I might run a few more plays. I know we've almost done nothing in the red zone. But I think we've gotten a very good look at the team today. We've gotten to see all the new packages that I put in. And uh, we got to see Bo Lee. And soon we'll be seeing this team when the games count against Vanderbilt in week one, coached by Jonathan Starks. We have a tougher non-conference schedule this year for sure. So I'm looking forward to it. And remember, Bears franchise is going up once I am complete. So you can go right from this to Bears week two. He's throwing these comebacks so perfectly. A laser out to Jermaine Finley. I could, I, if I didn't have a clock in front of me, I wonder how much time I could spend doing this. Oh, look at Hampton out there with a great play. Oh, Kyle Thomas coughs it up now. So we did see some fumbles today, but I'm not concerned about Lee or Thomas considering how many carries they've had without a fumble. But Marcus Payne, he uh, did not have the best practice. Couldn't get yards after contact and fumbled twice. There's Jameel Butler. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap up today's stream. Thank you for joining me today with another fun Kalispell Dynasty stream. I really enjoy these off seasons. And uh, these off-season practices have become something that I'm glad I'm doing regularly now. Thank you for all the super chats and all the, the questions today, everybody. I appreciate you spending some time with me and just having some fun here at the Kalispell Dynasty. But the Bears franchise is going to be posted here in just a couple of minutes, so... I'll have more content for you soon, and if you haven't watched already, Matt Pierre Career Mode is on my second channel. That is going to wrap up today's stream, everybody. Thank you all, and have a great day.
as long as I'm up to date here on the Super Chats, we are good to go. All right. I'll see you all next time. Thank you again.